This is Adi, and you're listening to the Summer of Bitcoin Experience. In this episode, we talk to Ayush Anand from India. Ayush participated in Summer of Bitcoin 2022, contributing to Bcoin, which is a Bitcoin implementation in JavaScript. Ayush worked on implementing BIP 157 and 158 in Bcoin, making it easy for anyone to run Bitcoin nodes without requiring a ton of storage space. We discuss his journey into Bitcoin, challenges and wins from his Summer of Bitcoin project, and advice for aspiring open source developers. Let's hear it from Ayush. Hope you enjoy it. Ayush, welcome to the Summer of Bitcoin experience. Good to have you. Yeah, uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, so let me just introduce myself. Um, sure. I am Ayush. Currently, I am a third year student pursuing a bachelor's degree in computer science at IIT Jodhpur. I was selected in the summer of Bitcoin 2022 and I worked under the organization called Bcoin to implement the compact block creator service. Okay, so we'll get into your experience with summer of Bitcoin in a bit, but tell us about your journey into Bitcoin. When was the first time you heard about it and what was your first impression? Yeah, um, so I heard about Bitcoin for the first time, I think somewhere around 2012. Back then, I just thought it was some kind of a digital currency, which is kind of similar to fiat, but just not on the paper. And later on, I came to know about the fact that most websites or web pages on the dark web actually use Bitcoin as their currency because it kind of provides them with more anonymity compared to the fiat currency and is uh, not moderated by the government. Um, I only started reading extensively about the Bitcoin ecosystem just last year, and I really loved the engineering that went into it. I think it's worth paying attention to because it's not moderated by a few central people and is very robust to inflation because of the cap of 21 billion that it has on it. And this truly gives you what we call a free market. And it also showcases great engineering such as the consensus system which it, uh, which it has. So, yeah, that's how I first heard and got into the Bitcoin ecosystem. Nice. So coming to Summer of Bitcoin, uh, you said, you know, you applied and worked um, with the Bitcoin organization. Um, can you tell us why you chose Bitcoin as an organization? And yeah. first of all, like, what does Bitcoin do? Yeah, so uh, Bitcoin is basically an alternative implementation of Bitcoin core. So. Uh, Bitcoin is basically an open source repository. There is no organization behind it, but there is a certain standard reference which we call Bitcoin Core. Uh, and then there are alternative implementations of the Bitcoin Core in different languages. And Bitcoin is one such implementation of Bitcoin Core. Uh, it is in the JavaScript language, which is something I was very familiar with. And also, uh, I wanted to see the basic principles of how Bitcoin works from the bottoms up. And that's basically why I joined Bitcoin and I got to work on the, the project itself was very interesting about the uh, compact block filter service. So yeah, that was basically my motivation for joining Bitcoin. So let's talk more about your specific project that you worked on. Uh, can you tell us um, what I, what the project idea was and what were its benefits to the Bitcoin project and also the overall Bitcoin ecosystem? Yeah. Uh, so basically, there are several kind of nodes in Bitcoin ecosystem, and a node is something which relays transactions, which does all the accounting, which enforces the rules of the system. And there's something called as a full node, which provides the maximum functionality that a node can provide. But the problem with full node is that it has uh, it has it has to store the entire blockchain on it, which is roughly near like I think around 500 GB right now. And you can't really have it on your mobile phone, a uh, full node. So if you don't have a full node on your mobile phone and you want to use Bitcoin on your mobile phone, then you basically have a wallet which makes a connection to something known as a peer. Peer is basically just node on another server. And when you connect to that peer, you basically request it for certain data that you need to in order to make that transaction or even just show the user what his transaction history has been. And if you request this data from your wallet, then your addresses could be compromised, your privacy could be exposed because now that particular peer knows which addresses belong to you. 
so the so they basically introduced something known as bloom filters to help solve this problem but uh, bip 157 and 150 are basically an improvement over those bloom filters because these bloom filters had the problem in which you could basically dos uh, do a denial of service attack on the peer so now uh, the bip 157 and 158 basically propose a kind of a protocol in which uh, it's more robust you cannot dos the system and you can still hide the uh, conserve the privacy of the user so my project was to basically implement that in the bitcoin repository and uh, this implementation helps the bitcoin ecosystem and the bitcoin because now users can get more privacy on their on their plans and wallets interesting Let's take a quick break and hear about today's sponsor. Hey everyone, this is Adi. When I was starting in the Bitcoin industry a few years ago, there were hardly any resources to learn from. It was especially hard to find other like-minded Bitcoin developers and discuss about building apps on the Bitcoin blockchain. Well, things have changed, and I'm so excited to share with you about the Build on L2 initiative. Build on L2 is a community-led effort by contributors and companies building on core lightning and the liquid network it's a space to connect with bitcoin builders product managers designers and developers through events and mentorship programs and learn from experts building the future of bitcoin it's exactly what i wish i had when i was starting out in bitcoin go to buildonl2.com to join the community and learn how to build killer apps on bitcoin back to the show can you share maybe the challenges that you came across during your project and you know maybe how you overcame them yeah uh, so firstly there were like differences between how bitcoin core was implemented and how bitcoin was implemented so the first part of the implementation happened to be just going through the code base understanding uh, which part does what and after that we had to basically uh, figure out in which parts of the code we need to make the modifications so the bip is two part the first part is the actual algorithm for the cryptography that's involved and the second part is defines the protocols which were involved so we had to like understand what uh, what the protocols were how to implement them on the uh, bitcoin and uh, there were some implementation uh, like so specific implementation problems which we encountered because the structure of the bitcoin was a little different from that of bitcoin core but we eventually figured it out with the help of my mentor and yeah so th- that was the challenges that we faced in uh, implementing this tell us about your mentor like how was your experience working with him yeah uh, so my mentor for the project was uh, Matthew Zipkin he is currently the maintainer of the bitcoin repository and also the handshake repository which is another project and he's really cool and he was very patient in explaining everything which i didn't understand or i got wrong and we would basically have weekly meetings related to the project so in one of those meetings i actually remember him showing us uh, cool stuff like uh, full node which was running on raspberry pi and yeah so i would say he was a pretty great mentor and he was really patient for the whole process awesome so you mentioned earlier like why you felt you know bitcoin was important can you basically walk us through um, your understanding of bitcoin like before participating in summer of bitcoin and then how it changed over the course of the summer during internship uh, yeah um so i was particularly interested in the engineering aspect of that went into the bitcoin and before i had never really looked into how the bitcoin prevents the problem of say double spending uh, i just thought it was you know some kind of digital currency uh, so when i started go understanding bitcoin i read through the white paper of the bitcoin and to the book uh, broking bitcoin by cal rosenbaum and i really i really loved the engineering aspects i really loved how the consensus rules work how you know a uh, 51% attack works and uh, those have really helped me understand why bitcoin is uh, non literally non inflationary and why it is something worth paying attention to when it's important something which i didn't really understand back then uh, 
because I have I didn't really have much of an understanding of why inflation is bad or how how exactly the monetary system works. Wow, that's awesome. So um, let's talk about life like after internship. Uh, what are you up to these days? Yeah, so uh, I in general try to just uh, you know keep up with what all is happening in the space of decentralization. And one of the most recent, uh, not recent, but interesting developments in that space is uh, decentralized social media. So some things like Noster protocol, uh, there's this thing like Noster, which is basically a protocol that reduces centralization and creates censorship resistant social media platforms. Uh, it has, you know, kind of like relays, which are similar to the Bitcoin network, and it can relay blogs or other contents. And even if a particular delay like bans some kind of a content, the other videos can still continue to work. So this is something really exciting that I'm looking forward to um, and keeping up with uh, about what happens in the decentralization space. Yeah. One thing to note here is that Noster is a protocol that does not need a blockchain. Like it doesn't have mm -hmm. any blockchain stuff. And yet it is proving to be a very interesting a protocol for you know decentralized social networks so there's a lesson there where you know to build something decentralized i think um you don't necessarily need a blockchain or even a token or some coin uh to to able to pull it off uh, and nostr is a great example of of you know of such a of such a protocol um so you know maybe just wrapping things a bit can you, you know, tell the folks who've joined and who will probably listen to this podcast later, uh, how does one go about understanding Bitcoin if they are a beginner? Yeah, uh, so I would recommend a beginner to start with the book Rocking Bitcoin by Kaja Rosenbaum. It's really an excellent book. It starts from scratch from the very, uh, from the very basics of Bitcoin and it builds upon it. So when I was applying to the program, I basically went through this book. And yeah, I think that's pretty good for a beginner. And after that, they could actually just go through the source code of Bitcoin core and try and make sense of what exactly each part of the code is doing. So that would be my advice for a beginner starting to understand Bitcoin. Sounds good. Um... How would you advise folks as far as like the open source development is concerned? Because open source is very different than, you know, working in a company, in a job. Yep. Uh, so my advice for anyone who's trying to contribute to any open source project is to first start by, you know, finding out which project they find interesting and they want to contribute. Once that is done, then they can, uh, they should try probably setting the project up on their local development environment so that they can explore it further. And once they have done the setup on their local development environment, um, then they should just go to the uh, GitHub or GitLab or wherever the code is hosted and look at what the development workflow has been, which involves looking at past pull requests or the commit messages. Um, like for example, understanding how the commit messages are structured, uh, what commits need to be rebased and which commits don't need to be rebased. So they are, the, they are on the same page with the community of that particular project. And after this, they could probably pick up a, a, like a small bug, beginner friendly bug, or they could add some test coverage to the repository. And once they have that basic test coverage and beginner friendly bugs fixed, uh, they probably have a very good understanding of the code base. And then they can actually start contributing to uh, the major parts of the code base. Awesome. That's pretty useful advice. Finally, um, what tips would you give for applicants who are applying to Summer of Bitcoin this year and advice, you know, on succeeding during the internship program itself? Yeah. Uh, so the advice for that is basically the same as uh, open source development. So I would just suggest them to find the related Bitcoin projects, which they are interested in. And then just configure them on their local environment and then try adding some test coverage to it. And after that, they have to uh, make a proposal for the project. So for the proposal, uh, I, there is a template which is shared on the website of the Summer of Bitcoin about how to add good proposals. And you know, once, once they have a very good understanding of how the code base works, uh, it really 
is essential. I think it's essential for writing a good project proposal. And so that's my advice for cracking the symbol of Bitcoin. Now, during the internship, uh, I just, what I suggest is to, you know, uh, talk to the mentor, understand what are the requirements of this particular project, uh, what is the structure of the workflow that they are going to be used, uh, when the meets would be held, just show up to the meets. Uh, and yeah, that's basically my advice for succeeding at the uh, internship. Hey, Ayush, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and sharing about your Summer of Bitcoin experience. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Summer of Bitcoin experience. I would love to get your thoughts on what else would you like to hear from these student developers and how to make this the most valuable podcast for getting started with Bitcoin open source development. Write to us at hello at summerofbitcoin.org. Can you do us a small favor? Go online and share this episode with at least one friend who you think would benefit from this episode. Until next time.